Hello. We have already talked about Matthew. We've talked about Mark. Now we're going to talk about Luke. And at this point, um, if you are just really, really excited to dive full into Luke and get all the same level of detail that I gave you with Mark and Matthew, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. And the reason is I'm going to skip over a lot of stuff. And the reason I'm going to skip over a lot of stuff is because we're going to talk about it later. Um, one very interesting thing when we talk about Luke is that Luke is connected with Acts. See, that is the most important thing you can understand about the book of Luke, is that Luke and Acts are actually two halves of the same whole. Um, often scholars will refer to Luke and Acts as Luke Acts, like Luke hyphen Acts. Um, they'll be described as one book, Luke Acts. And uh, this is really interesting because what we have is we have a two volume set. Um, they are a narrative, they're two volumes, and you start off with Act with Luke giving the life of Jesus, and you get to Acts giving the continuation of the church, the predecessors of Jesus. Some have actually described this. Um, a few scholars um, have written books comparing this to the Old Testament, where we have First and Second Chronicles, or we have Kings of Samuel and Kings, where you have the first is this, you know, we have the beginning, talks about the great king, and then the next is the predecessors to the great king. So it's very interesting how you see Luke and Acts are together. So I'm not going to give a whole bunch of detail on things like authorship and date um, here. And the reason is because when I talk about Acts, I'm going to go into all that information. And really, a lot of the information about authorship and date that we get comes more from Acts than Luke. So you're gonna see that it is in these PowerPoints. So if you need to study for a quiz or a test or something like that, all the information related to Luke and Acts and their dating and their authorship is in this set of PowerPoints. But because I'm gonna talk about it when I go over Acts and you already have a lot of video that you have to watch, um, this week for other things, um, I'm going to focus my Luke discussion, my dating of Luke discussion in the Acts video. So you're still going to get that information. It's still in your PowerPoints, but I encourage you for my explanation to read the Acts video. Okay. And that way you're not hearing the same exact stuff twice. So in Luke, what are we going to talk about? If authorship and date is not going to be discussed much in this video, what is Dr. Browning going to spend the rest of this video talking about? And that's really just the stuff that's unique to Luke, right? So let's jump in. First thing, you're going to see, again, similarities. You're going to see Luke Acts. We'll talk about that later. Who is it written to? It's written to a guy named Theophilus. You see Theophilus mentioned in Luke. You see Theophilus mentioned in Acts. Who is that? We're going to talk about it in Acts. But let's talk about um, kind of what are the focuses? What is Luke, the book of Luke, about? It's about the story of Jesus' life. It's about, like the other Gospels, it's about what happened in Jesus' life. But it emphasizes some things that aren't emphasized in the other books. And you see this in Acts as well. You see it emphasizing the role of women. You see it emphasizing witnessing and sharing our faith. You see it, both of them emphasizing the Holy Spirit and also God's initiative in salvation. God taking the initiative to lead people to Christ. So I'm going to skip a lot of slides. Don't worry. Like I said, we will go into all kinds of depth. Everything you want to know about this you will see us go into so much more depth when we talk about Acts. Because frankly, a lot of the information we really get from the book of Acts, and I don't want to bore you to death. So now, occasion and purpose. Let's just focus on Luke here. Why did he write it and what's the purpose? Well, actually, there's a lot of debate about why he wrote it from scholars, 
Um, but we do have a pretty simple explanation at the beginning. Um, there in Luke chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, he says he wants to give a trustworthy account. A lot of people had written about Jesus's life, and likely Mark and Matthew, well, there's debate about Matthew, but at the very least, Mark has been written at this point. So, um, what do we see Luke doing? Luke is taking eyewitnesses. A lot of people have already talked about Jesus's life. They've told stories. They've written about Jesus's life. And what we see Luke doing, Luke very much has an approach of a historian. Now, some very critical scholars will argue that he's not writing history, but really their, their arguments are quite weak. Um, I don't want to get on too much of a tangent about that. Um, but Luke is just a great example of writing a history or a life of a person, what we call a bios, a biography, an ancient biography. Um, this is just a fantastic example of this historical work, this writing of a biography of Jesus. And um, we see what he wants to do is he wants to take a whole bunch of different sources and write an orderly account. And that's really something unique about Luke and Acts is he openly tells you, I am taking eyewitness testimony and I'm bringing it all together in order to give you a, an orderly, succinct account of the life of Jesus and the spread of his church. Like this is, this is historian language. This is biographer language. This is very intentional to tell you, I am doing my due diligence to make sure I'm writing this out. And that's important because Luke is not an eyewitness, at least not for the life of Jesus. Now, when we talk about Acts, you'll get all that. But for the life of Jesus, Luke is not an eyewitness. But what he is doing and what he tells you in Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, is that he is interviewing eyewitnesses. He's looking at things written by eyewitnesses. Luke is approaching it like a historian. And I, as a person who has a background in studying history, um, love that. Love that about Luke. So that's, that's a big part of his purpose. We also see he's trying to give readers a certain knowledge base. He's trying to um, help them to understand things. And there's another, there's another possible purpose, a secondary purpose. Um, many people argue this, and I think this is not unfounded. Um, I've argued this at, at, at points to some degree. Um, and that is that part of his goal here is to present an apologetic for Christianity. That part of the reason he's writing Luke Acts is to say, look, all of these Jews are saying that Christians are bad and that we hate the Roman government and that we're trying to hurt the Roman government. But that's just not true. Um, we're actually Christians. We're the victims of crimes and injustice, we're not the perpetrators. So many have argued that it's also got an apologetic purpose, a defense of the faith. That word apologetics, um, if you're not used to it, it doesn't mean to apologize. It simply means to defend the Christian faith. That's what it means. So um, what we see also here is that this is a Christian witness. It's it, the idea here is that he's letting people know, look, um, Christians are, you know, we can be good for society. We have a Jewish savior. Or we have a predominantly Gentile church with a Jewish savior. And you really see how this develops, how this takes place, how this happens. So an outline of this, you kind of get a look at the outline of how the Gospel of Luke develops. Again, you can go and look at that. Um, but let's talk about the special features of the Gospel of Luke. So one thing that you'll really notice with the Gospel of Luke is more so than any of the other Gospels. The Gospel of Luke focuses on the Gentiles and focuses on the moral, uh, on those who are considered outcasts. So you really see Luke put focus on um those who are Gentiles, those who are moral or social outcasts, those who are poor, the impoverished, um, women. You see him really focus on women and the importance of women um, in the early church. So these are things that are very unique to the book of Luke. You see him really double down and say, look, 
the gospel that Jesus brings is not just for the affluent, not just for those who are well off and are well to do, not just for people who are ethnically where you think they should be. They're the Jews. They're they're God's chosen people. No, the gospel is for all people. It's for the outcast Gentile. It's for the social and moral outcasts like tax collectors. It's for those who are poor and impoverished. Now, that's not to say that these groups are not mentioned in the other gospels. They certainly are, especially the poor, especially Gentiles. Um, but Luke just puts a real focus, a real point on the fact that Jesus is interested in the outcast. And Luke really emphasizes this. And that God's salvation is not just for those who have it together, but his salvation is for the outcast. Um, and that those who are often on the margins have an important role to play in God's church. Again, you see that in the other Gospels. But Luke puts it in your face. He rubs it in your face and says, I want you to see this. Jesus is for the outcast. Jesus is for the poor, for the ones, for the Gentile, for the people that you don't care about and that you push to the margins. Jesus is for them as well. So that's really important. We also see an emphasis on prayer and a real emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Now, prayer, you see a version of the Lord's Prayer in Luke, like in Matthew. Um, but Holy Spirit, especially when we get to Acts, right? Um, you could almost say it's the gospel of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is emphasized in Luke as well. Um, and again, I've already pointed this out. Luke is so self-conscious about being historically accurate. Um, and again, you will see scholars here and there who are trying, who are hostile to Christianity, try to attack the historicity of Luke, but their arguments are quite weak. It, I mean, this is just a self-consciously historical in nature book by ancient standards. Um, and finally, what what's the theme? What's the focus? What point is Luke trying to make? And it's really that Jesus is the savior of the world. And specifically, he's the savior of the people who others don't care about. No matter who they are, it's the whole world. Not that it's just the Jews, the whole world, Gentiles included. Not just the people who are seem to have the highest social status, the whole world. So again, if you're just really hungry to know more about date and authorship and all that, you can read the PowerPoints and you can, I guess, just be patient and wait until that Acts video, and I'll go into more depth there. I encourage you to read Luke. Luke is a fantastic book. Um, again, you're supposed to read it for this class, um, but I, I really encourage you to read it and to just get that emphasis. So I hope that you enjoy studying, and I hope that this is a help to you to understand it in more depth.